We met through a mutual friend. I was talking with my girlfriend one day about relationships and she had mentioned Jake and that he had owned a company. And I said, oh, I know who Jake is. I said, but he's too young, too short. I don't think I'm really interested in a relationship. And the next thing I knew, Jake was coming through the door. I was, you know, familiar with knuckleheads. I mean, it was the town hangout. So I got a cheeseburger and we hung out and, you know, Sabrina fell in love with me. What can I say? Actually, he fell in love with me because I cooked him the best cheeseburger in the world. Oh, in a microwave, by probably, the way. Probably, probably. We used how to cook our down. cheeseburgers in microwaves at Knuckleheads. When I was 15, I think probably year 95, 96, is uh, when Ron actually asked me to work here. You know, it was my first official job. It was just a job that I felt very comfortable with. Ron was a great boss. Everybody knew Ron in town. It was a hangout. Everybody came here after games. Ron's right here. This is my memory of Knuckleheads, Ron. Yep. And basically, after every ball game, this is where you come. So I played Little League Baseball for the Granville Rec. There'd be four or five teams, and everybody would come to this little side window, or they'd come up to these windows, and we'd get vanilla dipped in chocolate, and we'd sit outside, and it was what you did. Whether you won or lost, you came to Knucklehead for ice cream. This is the corner I was walking around, right here. This is set up the exact same way. And I was walking around the corner, and he belches right there, and I was like, oh, it's a really Lord. Loud burp. You know, we were pretty much, we were in love and what we thought was love. And um, we ended up finding out that we were going to have a baby three months after we knew each other. And yeah. so that was a really challenging time. Um, my parents were, my mom was pretty disappointed. I didn't even know Sabrina's dad at that time. I don't think I'd ever met. I'm like, hey, I'm here for the Halloween party. And by the way, you know, you're gonna be a grandpa. <laughs> and uh, it was tough. We felt like we let them down, right? Yeah. You know, by being Christian, religious uh, family, and you weren't supposed to do that. You're supposed to get married first, then have kids, then, you know, have a dog and a white picket fence, and everybody's perfect. So after that first day, everybody was on board with, you know, it's a new baby. Everybody's on board with a new baby. So we kind of figured things out, and... I we... think after the initial shock of, okay, we're gonna have a baby, we're not married yet, we need to decide what we're gonna do. And so he did the right thing, he asked me to marry him, I said yes, and um, he had not ever been in an apartment or anything, he still was <laughs> living at home, but he was 19, and um, I was 20, 21. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a roller coaster of a lot of emotions, there was just a lot going on, but I think sometimes when you're in life and you're young and you're going through mistakes or going through difficult times, it feels like the world's gonna end. And it was really challenging. Like there was just so much we had to learn. We didn't know each other. He was very much um, worked all the time. I worked a lot, but it was just trying to navigate through now. We've got to build a relationship. And then we moved in together in a little apartment and um, life began for us. So I had had on my bucket list to own Knuckleheads for 10 years and springtime was coming and Knuckleheads was gonna be opening again. And so I was ready to go in and tell them, if you're ready to sell, I'm ready to buy. That was always my first thing to tell them when I got a hot fudge milkshake. And I actually had heard through the grapevine they weren't opening. And I said, why are you guys not opening? And they had just had enough of it. Like it was just not doing well. There was some health issues happening with one of the owners and they just had decided not to renew the lease. And I knew it was our opportunity to purchase it. And I said, hey, we gotta buy this. And he said, okay. I was I like, how much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were sold, really. Sabrina was buying it. I and mean, so a business that's closing and they're not gonna reopen is not worth much. So, you know, all we bought was uh, the name knuckleheads and the equipment that they had. 
So the lease was with the Ross's Market, which is next door to us, and they've been leasing there. I mean, for 50 for, years. Yeah, or it's been an ongoing relationship. And we right. walk in to the building, and it, it was, was a mess. Yeah. It was a mess. And we mean no disrespect to the previous owners because we love them, we care for them very much. There was just a lot going on. It's a burger place, like it's a cheeseburger place. And they have a four burner griddle with only one burner that works. And that's what we bought. But we didn't really realize that, right? We didn't realize they were hanging on by a thread. Knuckleheads we got in 2017, and I remember we had to scrub the floors. Like, we would go in a assembly line. We would be on our hands and knees scrubbing the floors one way, and then somebody would go again, and we'd just go back and forth. Like, it was so dirty in there. We spent, I think we only had seven or 10 days to get it set up before we had to open. It really was super fun, like having a restaurant, getting to work as a family. My grandma and grandpa, my mom's parents worked in there with us. When we first got it, we were really excited. We didn't care. We loved it. We yeah, loved it so, so much. Fun. And then maybe what, like two weeks later, we realized this was hard work. That you know, employees. Fast work. food is hard work. Yeah. And ice cream machines cost as much as a car. We figured that out really quick. We didn't know that when we bought them. I wanted to have knuckleheads. I wanted to see it through. And I started to get the passion and the excitement of, I created this mess, I guess, and I'm gonna figure out a way to clean it up. Like the first week, very busy. We're yeah, thinking everything right. was, yeah. we're, we've got, you know, uh, cash sales, credit card sales. It was, the numbers were good. Um, it, we could balance it out with the number of employees because everybody was excited. Knuckleheads was closed. Everybody knew it wasn't going to open. We revived it. A lot of the community came in. It was a shock to the town that the Warners had now purchased Knuckleheads. Like, how does that happen? But I was so excited for the Denison kids to come back in, the town to come back yeah. in, the ball teams to come back in. It was just an excitement of, I had this vision. I you remember did. my dad saying to me, um, I'm just wondering when you're gonna stop burning the candle at both ends. It was just like, it was super fun to like build relationships with the employees and then work as a family. My cousin um, worked down there for a little bit for one summer. And so it was just like a super fun place for all of us to work. And I don't, I know there was like a lot of stress with it, but it's easier. I feel like I just remember a lot of the good times of all of us working down there. Up until COVID, I mean, it really was just like a simple place to work. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is threatening to close restaurants, bars, and the gyms too in response to the exploding COVID-19 epidemic in his state. Governor Mike DeWine taking new steps to enforce the Dine Safe Ohio order. We'll be going out and doing random checks to see how people are doing particularly with the social distancing, making sure the restaurant staff are wearing face coverings when appropriate. We have asked businessmen, businesswomen, professionals to work with experts in health. We've talked about how we need to, as Ohioans, do two things at once, bring back our economy, uh, at the same time, stay safe. Everywhere we went, people were masked up. There were dots on the floor. There was every, everything was so weird. And I just did not want to be a part of that. I didn't want to be a part of the new normal. We just decided we were going to take a stance to say, if you want to come into our restaurant unmasked, you can come in. Right. If you want to come in masked, come in. 
We're gonna serve you either way. Well, that just did not sit well with the village. And so then our town decided that they were gonna put a mask mandate on top of Governor DeWine's that all businesses had to um, enforce masks for their employees and then also enforce customers coming in to wear a mask. And you know, I had a couple people approach me and say, Sabrina, what are you gonna do if the town continues to put pressure on you? And I'm like, nothing. We sell cheeseburgers. I mean, cream, like, milk, I don't. You think about it. <laughs> I don't answer to the village. I answer to the health department. And so it was frustrating to watch people do what the government was telling them to do, but not do what they knew they should do. And what they should have done is made a decision for themselves, and they didn't. And it was super frustrating for me when our village manager decided to tell everyone in the town that they had to mask up and suit up or they were gonna get shut down. Police chief would come down and we'd go over the, um, the Dine Safe Ohio mandate. And then we would go over the Granville ordinance and I would show, I would have it already ready. I'd have it highlighted and I'd say right here is why we're accepting um, medical freedom. Like if somebody doesn't wanna wear a mask, we serve them and all of our people are standing on this exemption. Cause it was 15 exemptions. Like if you have a safety policy, an OSHA safety policy of why you can't wear a mask while you run a grill. And I'd say, and by the way, we're standing on the constitution freedom of uh, religion. And the police chief would say, hey, we agree with the constitution. That's what we swear an oath to stand up to enforce the constitution and we'd be good. And then he'd go around front and he'd buy a cheeseburger every time he'd come down because he, he at that point would support our business. And the more the town came after us, the more conservatives came out of the woodwork to support us. Like on a lot of days during COVID, we would do two and three times a normal day. I think that was the other reason they came out of the woodwork is they didn't, the, the village council and our manager didn't want the word to get out that it's profitable to, to respect medical freedom. What the media was trying to do and what our village manager was trying to do, they were trying to control everybody by fear and that works with it when you own your own business because that's your money. That's yeah. how you pay your bills. And so if you are threatening an entrepreneur to say, I'm gonna shut you down if you don't do this, that entrepreneur now has to make a decision. Do I comply with the fear and with what the authority is telling me? Or do I not comply and take a risk? And that also then became political it also became something where people would start saying you're not a Christian because the Bible says that you should follow authority. It became this, you must not care about people, you're killing people, you're yeah. evil. And then it also became, thank you so much for not right. making us do what the government is asking us. Yeah. And so it was this big flip, like people that we had known forever. We've grown up in Granville. We had met here. We purchased knuckleheads because it was a love story. Right. All these things that were so happy and great memories had now turned into this chaos. We remind everybody that there are times when someone, uh, you may see someone in a store uh, who has a very good reason for not wearing a mask. It may not be a huge number of people, but I think we should treat them with respect and love uh, and not assume that they're uh, just not wearing the mask just because they don't want to wear a mask. Uh, each person has different uh, medical situation. Uh, and so I just think that uh, it's important for all of us to remember that. Those of us who aren't born in America, those of us who came from another country, we recognize symbols of attacks on liberty and freedom much more than people who maybe been here for three or four or five generations. So when a government tells you your job's essential, your job's not, your business is essential, your business is not, when they tell you what you have to do, how to behave, how to control your speech, those are things we're familiar with. Those aren't things that are new to us because we've seen those things in other countries. A large central government does not work because the decisions that are made in a far off capital will never be right for the local people. So one of the things that I want to achieve in Washington is to drive power out of Washington, D.C. into as close a place to local control as possible. So this idea that in America, for the first time openly, somebody's saying to you, under the guise of a, of a virus that's while well serious, was not serious enough to undermine the bedrock of what America is about, which is freedom and liberty. That was incredibly shocking to me. 
And what was even more shocking, honestly, was how many people just went along with it. December hit, December of 2020, and we had a business uptown that I had noticed was not opening much. And this particular business is called Prospect Smoothie. And I remember thinking, I think we should call them and see if they want to sell. So we made the phone call and the answer was yes. Yeah. And so I told Jake and he thought I was crazy. He said, I don't know why you're, why you want to do this. And I thought, I think it would be so fun to have a healthy version of food and then a comfort version of food. And I just really loved the place. And on top of that, this building that it's in is um, the Warner building. My great, great grandpa actually built this building. So he owned, I guess it was, they called it a livery stable, which is before cars, they stored their horses. It was like a parking garage for horses. I mean, they could have named it their name, right? They could have named it anything, but they felt like honoring the, the family that built it. And they actually had us come for, um, do a photo shoot with them, with me, uh, my dad, and Elijah. We're in the photo shoot with them to represent the Warners. And we made a deal within a couple months and um, we took ownership in December of 2020. And that just really upset the people that were targeting us in town. They, they got fired up. They started giving us warnings. They started talking about us again. They started writing newspaper articles, health department calls. Oh, it was like uh, 10 OSHA times calls. Worse. But instead of just knuckleheads, we were getting it at both places. Some people would come in and just like, I remember one guy came in and just yelled at me, told me I was stupid, irresponsible, and just like yelling at me. I never know what to say, I just like stand there. I was probably just like trying not to laugh, honestly, because he just come, he just came in, he was super mad and just like yelling at us about how dumb we were. I was like, um, okay. <laughs> then I started really realizing who um, our village manager was, Herb. And it turned out that he and I go to the same coffee shop. And I can't tell you probably prior to knowing who this person is, how many times we've probably passed each other. But once we found out who each other was, I do not engage with him. Um, I find that very inappropriate anyway. It's not something that I would go up and engage in a conversation with him about what's happening. Jake was doing a lot of that through email, but not in public. I just would, that's just not something I would do. Well, Herb would take it upon himself to engage with me. And he would say different things while I was in line. He would say I should be ashamed of myself. Like it was just heating up for where we must have really ticked him off and embarrassed him. And so it just continued to get heated. Denison and Knuckleheads, when I worked there as a teenager, there was a great relationship. It was super busy with Denison students. When we bought it, there was like no relationship with Denison. We didn't have very many Denison kids coming in. But what we had found out was, is that the town, the village, and um, Denison, they were kind of arguing because they want, Denison wanted the kids to come back and the village wanted the kids to stay home. Denison basically said, we're bringing the kids back. We'll compromise with you guys. We'll write up some guidelines for the students, but they're coming back. And inside the guidelines were, if any of the students go into any of the businesses in Granville and the businesses are not wearing masks, if the student was found there, that they would be removed from campus and not allowed to come back. And there were only two businesses in town that were not requiring masks, knuckleheads and prospect. And so once again, I was really ticked off because it's such targeting. Well, then we got served our very first notice of if you don't comply, we're going to give you a fine and we're going to shut you down. So we have our check sheet. Uh, we will forward you the check sheet by email today. Um, we'll provide the law director to give an assessment and then be back in touch next week. You'll have the check sheet today by email. Okay, and then um, are you doing this to other businesses? I'm doing to the other businesses that, that we have active complaints about yes. Why just active complaints? Because that's how we start the process. So, so even if you... Sorry, go into the prospect smoothie next. So even if you see a business that you walk into with no hand sanitizer, no signs on the door, and no dots on the floor, you yourself would not complain? Um, I myself would not complain. That depends on the business, it depends on how they're running. We, we are, our first 
do these are ordinance, which is a mass ordinance, face government ordinance. Which you tried to we get are. me on and you couldn't. Well, I'm not going to have that conversation. If you were here, we finished our inspection. I will forward you the check sheet today. See but if you us. walk into one of the businesses uptown and they don't have the same things I don't have right now, you Sabrina, would not file a complaint. This is not about their businesses. This is about yours. I understand. I'm just asking a question. Am I allowed to ask a question? You can ask any questions. Yeah. Like, okay. That's all I asked. So our chief of police comes and delivers these. I come down the, the letters he gives to me and I said, what is this? And he's like, well, you need to go ahead and open them. And he's like, you know, this is something that you need to take care of. And he's very docile. And I said to him, I said, why are you delivering this? And he said, well, I asked to deliver it. He said, Sabrina, I want you to know that this is coming from a place we're not targeting, we just, re it's an in the name of health is what the mayor and him would always say. And I said, well, I don't believe that. And so that was when things turned with the chief of police and things started to get heated with the health department. So we had the health department called on us so many times. We were proving every time the health department came in, we were in 100% compliance. And really the health department in my mind for they are my boss, but they're coming in to make sure that my food is not cold, that my food is not moldy, that I don't have rodents in my store, that we're wearing gloves, that the temperatures of my meats are okay. They're not coming in to make sure that I'm telling everybody that walks through my door, you need to mask up and you need to have good health conscious around you. We were over 400 days into this mask mandating, and so I decided I was gonna take a whiteboard at Knuckleheads and write out how many days this was happening. And I just said, it's been 398 days, you're still alive. Please remove your mask, give a hug, give a smile. And that sign went viral. I don't have any social media, so my mom would tell me everything and she was like, oh, it just got posted in the United Kingdom or, oh, just this, and I'm like, that's so crazy. And I'm like, well, you should put like, at Knuckleheads Granville or like, something on it. I was like, you need to like, make sure you like, get the publicity off of it. Like it comes back to you and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do it. It was going viral. Like people were coming in, taking the photo and I guess so many people were sharing it. And there was like, specifically one account. I don't remember how many followers they had, but they had posted it. And a bunch of people in Granville found the post. It wasn't our account and they went crazy on it. And there were all these comments like, and it was a bunch of people more Annabelle's age, I think, sort of my age, but it was a bunch of high schoolers, some college kids, just going crazy on the whiteboard. She's like, why are they even saying anything? They're like 16. And my mom's, she's an adult. Like, why are they like jumping on her? I remember I was like, I literally went to, like I was friends with that kid. And I was like, we weren't like close, but like we talked or whatever. And I was like, that's like, I never would have thought it from like him, but I don't know. I feel like it was just like an eye opener for me. It fired the Granville High School up so bad, the, the seniors and juniors started getting involved. They just went online and started giving us reviews, negative reviews. Well, then a couple of them decided to go take it to the health department and give us a review at the health department. Now, what happens is, is that when you give a review, it's public. What I was shocked by was when I actually posted stuff on social media to say, this is what is being said and it's not true. That really fired up parents, and then the juniors and seniors were very offended at me for posting their words. And they started reaching out to our staff and calling them names and being disgusting, threatening them. I just came to the realization that what was happening, what Herb has started, is he literally started a divide in our community that was not necessary. So what the village decided to do was write us up again, and this time we were getting an inspection. We get our second written warning that, you know, these are the things that you need to be in compliance with if you have until X amount of time to get it done. If you don't, we're gonna come back in, we're gonna fine you. So around this time, we were getting fined. The second fine, the third fine would have been, they would have, char they would have shut us down, charged us money. But in that time frame, 
the Senate and the House just passed something to override DeWine. And he, on that day or so many days after, he withdrew every order that Amy Acton had uh, signed into, into mandates. But because he withdrew everything, all their fines were void. There was nothing they could do because all those fines were based on Amy Acton's Dine Safe Ohio mandate. And once we got through the mask thing, the dots, all the business owners kind of stopped doing their thing too, because they were all watching us. It has been a roller coaster of emotions, a roller coaster of the vision that I had was not necessarily all that. Um, there was no Dennis and kids pounding down the doors. There was no Granville being supportive, but we kind of created our own support system. Fast forward five years, we're in now, and we got a message a few months ago that they are not going to renew our lease. So Knuckleheads has been here now 57 years, and they're gonna just not renew our lease. Basically because of the, the stance we took for medical freedom during 2020. You know, we talk back and forth with Andy, he's our landlord, he's part of the Ross's family, so we always communicate with him. And so we're sitting with Andy at on the patio, and he said, I'm requesting that you guys no longer do any type of political events here. And I said, political events? I'm like, we haven't done anything political, Andy. And Jake said, are you talking about the Easter breakfast that we had? Like we had an Easter breakfast. It was a pancake breakfast. One of the governors that's running came. It was a last minute thing. It was not politically advertised. It wasn't an event for him. It wasn't. And I was like, what's the problem? Do you got a problem with Easter pancakes or syrup? It was, or do you have a problem that I have friends that are politicians, right? Is that a problem? And then I said, well, if we do decide to do that, what will you do? And he said, well, we won't renew your contract. I was so shocked and I think he was shocked too. I actually started crying and I said, I cannot believe you. I said, Andy, you know us. We literally have been in a contract with you for almost five years now. We came into this business. It was literally a, cr I mean, there was, it was a destroyed business and we have proven ourselves to you that we are going to take care of it. We've paid our rent on time. We've not had any issues until 2020. And I said, are you seriously considering not renewing our lease? And he said, what's well, been talked about? And I said, got it. And so that, after we got that blow, I was really just literally almost heartbroken because I was not thinking about moving. I wasn't right. thinking this is going to get to the point where now they're taking away our childhood memories. They're right. taking away where we met from. This is, this has to stop. And I've questioned, I said, you guys are not renewing our lease because of our religious and political beliefs. If we were um, of a different religion, if we were Muslim, if we were gay, if we were black, I think we would have a case, right? But because we're Christians, because we're conservatives, we are not accepted by the landlord. And they basically said also that you were banned for the store oh. up until a certain date. We were standing up for what we believed in, just like, I mean, everybody else, our landlord, they were standing up for what they believed in. I mean, they were wearing masks, they want everybody vaccinated and things like that. So it's two complete opposites, but we haven't come in and bothered you. We've stayed away. Them canceling the lease was really hard because we've been there for almost 60 years. My mom grew up working there. That's where my parents met. And so it's like sentimental value. It's very sad that they're going to come in and cancel it. When I started processing that they were not going to renew our lease, I thought, oh my gosh, we gotta find a place. And so we started really making it a reality that we have to find a place. Knuckleheads actually does close in January 2023 is when we are supposed to be out of here. Um, we're really excited about a property right now that is going to be pretty mind-blowing. For those people who wanted to cancel us, the people that you know think that Jake and I are so self-serving and the people that think that we're closing up and we're nowhere to be found again, we've got news. We're, yeah. we're sticking around. We are so excited about the doors that are opening, the venue that's going to be opening, and that Knuckleheads is going to be a part of that. So we're excited for you guys to see that.
So as many of you know, uh, here in Granville, we've been um, canceled and Knuckleheads only has about a year left and our landlord has said it's time for you to go. But we just really want you guys to know and we want the public to know we're not going anywhere. We may be moving buildings, but we are here to stay. We're still fighting. We're still going to continue to bring truth and bring the light of Jesus to this town. I know whatever we do next, like we'll do it together as a family. And going into it, I know we've like grown from where we've started. And I don't know, I'm excited to see like what we do here. And I don't know, I'm proud of like to be their daughter and to be able to go through like everything. I'm proud that it's with them. Like I wouldn't want to go through it with anybody else. So we're calling it North 64. I came up with that name because it's 64 acres and it's north from our house. Pretty excited. I mean, Jake and Sabrina are the exact example of what this country is all about. This idea that they could do a lot of other things. They don't have to be spending their time, effort, energy, uh, exposing their family to, to all the hate that happens when you put yourself out there. But the reality is they're called to actually serve their country and do what they feel is right. And so what Sabrina and Jake are doing is saying no more. We're going to push back. We're going to take our country back. We're, and it's not about power for them. It's about taking power away from elected officials and putting it with the people, which is the way it should be. You know, some people think that their voice is not big enough, but it only really takes one raindrop to cause that ripple effect. And in our small town, we stood up and said, use your voice. And so it is very important for people to get involved, to know who their council members are, who the school board is, because this is our life. Yeah. We are literally living in times where if you don't know what the Constitution means, if you don't know what your rights are, if you don't know what the exemptions are, which is what they're calling loopholes, they're yeah. going to take your business, they're going to take your freedom, and they won't think twice about it. Everybody's trying to keep us quiet. They want us to be quiet. The village loved us when we were uh, quiet little conservatives that just were entrepreneurs. But the minute we started using our voice is when they turned loose the cancel culture. And if that looks like you standing and saying, I'm not going to allow you village manager to come in and put dots on my floor and shut me down, then that's you standing and saying that. If that means you going to the school board and saying to the school council, you're not gonna allow my kids to read this garbage. You're not going to mask them. You're not going to put um, ideas in their head that aren't true. Then and that's your standing. That's what you have to do. We have to engage. We have to move forward or they're going to continue to do what they did in 2020. They're not going to cancel no. us. We're not going anywhere. We're here no. to stay. Yeah. This is our town. That's right. This is our town. Yeah. Hey everyone, Jake and Sabrina here. Thank you so much for watching our documentary. We can promise you there's more to come. And we want everyone to know that we want you to get involved. You guys, some of the elections around us did not turn out the way we thought they would. Some turned out really well. But the point is, is that we need to stay engaged. And we wanna give you guys some ideas of how to get engaged, how to stay engaged, because I know many of you are currently. So for us, if you want to invest into what we're doing, we want you to be able to do that. You can go to votewarner.life and check out the ways that you can be a part of what we're doing. You can also go to Facebook and all of our social media handles, which will be listed below, and like all of our pages, comment on them and share. That is the best way for you to work with us. You can also come into our businesses and get great smoothies, great food. You can hire Jake's for your outdoor needs for firewood, snow removal. You can also order maple syrup. There's many ways to be able to help. You guys, we are entrepreneurs. 
We're not used to handouts. We're just asking you to invest and to partner with us as we continue to expose the truth. We have more video footage coming. We have more information to give to you and we're not going to stop. My plan, our plan is to continue to use our video crew and be able to bring the truth to you in real time. You guys, what's happening right now across the state of Ohio, across the country actually, is really, really unacceptable. And it's still happening today. So we wanna encourage you, go to your council meetings, go to your school board meetings, go to your township meetings, go to your sheriff and ask him, why is our town in such a drug infiltrated area? So we just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching the documentary. We want to know your thoughts and we also want to hear from you. If you all have something that's happening in your town, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you're doing to fight back because as we know, this is not going away. We're signing up to take and instill and, and bring back some morals and ethics to the yeah. Republican Party. Believe me, there is more to come. We have so much truth coming out. So like us on our social media pages, like us on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe so that you can make sure to be the first to hear what's going on. We want to keep you informed. You can reach out to us. There's several ways to reach out to us. And we are so thankful for those of you who have been stepping up. I'm so excited for the Licking Valley area here. So we hope to see you guys soon. If you're near us in Licking County and you want to come and see us, make sure you tell us hello. Leave your information at the store if we're not there because we want to thank you for coming in and um, just being true patriots. We really appreciate you guys. Make it a great day and we can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you soon. All right, thank you.